Hello, hello to all the amazing YouTube people. The Neomer here with something fresh, something new. We'll be playing Orcs. So Orcs is like uh, a tower defense game where you are deck building a deck from tiles, which you can place on the map and they interact with each other in interesting ways. It uh, reminds me a lot of the board game called Carcassonne in the way they, they interconnect like the roads and castles and stuff. But anyway, it's best that I just show you, right? I really like it and I'm going to be playing a it a lot. So, well, enjoy the ride. So here we are. Uh, there are two factions right now in the game, apparently. The Rune Wardens and the uh, Rune Dune Reavers. And you cannot play these until you progress with that. And it also seems like they plan to add some more, so that's really nice to see. So the Rune Wardens, a stoic order that protects the realm in the 10th war. Master builders and adepts of rune enchantments. So they got the rune builder focus. Runes can empower castles and warriors. Developed castles and warriors regiments can be expanded and share runes and auras. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, you'll see soon. The Tenth War. The darkest times have begun. The henchmen of the eternal enemy are already at the door. We cannot delay this any longer. If we don't deal with this source of malice, the kingdom will be left with not one stone upon another. You open the book and it shows you the enemy and he is not alone. Three guardians block your path. He stands there, balefully staring at you throughout the pitch black void that separates you. Right, so this is like the campaign screen where, well, at the start you can just choose this mission, which uh, serves like a tutorial mission, really. So we got the uh, objective, we are in Medea Plains. Objective, defend your main castle against three waves. Uh, this seems to be like only one difficulty. Right here you can see what orcs you're gonna have, some warriors and berserkers and orcs with torches. There's some numbers there, but without uh, knowing the, like, you know, how much your buildings do and stuff, that information doesn't help too much. Uh, right, so we're gonna have a spell vault. Choose one of the three new spell cards each time a quest is completed. So this will be part of our deck building mechanic. And we got this orc clan here. The swarm clan. Enemy waves will mostly consist of a large number of weaker units. So this means splash damage will be good if you can like bring some to the table. Anyway, let's start the battle and see what this is all about. Orcs. Orcs is a game about building a castle and protecting it against a horde of orcs. Use cards to construct castles, buildings and roads to summon and upgrade your defenses. You can pause the game with spacebar and change game speed with 1, 2 and 3 keys. Tiles should be connected to others like play pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. So this is where the Carcassonne thing, if you ever played it, come in mind. So you, the tiles can only be placed down if it matches on all the borders to the already existing tiles. So grass has to go to grass, wall has to go to wall, road has to go to road. Roads to roads, castle parts to castle parts, and so on. If you can't place a tile in a certain spot, it means that something is blocking its construction and the tile does not fit. To complete the construction of a castle, make sure that it's fortified from all the sides. Build roads to boost your economy. A completed road will grant you an additional income every two and a half seconds. The longer the road, the longer you will receive it. You can learn the direction from which orcs are going to attack by looking at this red marker. If it's located at the edge of the map, it means that the next wave will come from there. So build your defenses accordingly. There are mystical vaults all over the realm. Vaults grant powerful deck modifying rewards. To open a vault, construct a tile nearby and complete its quest. So that's kind of important for the progression. To win, you have to survive orcs attacks with your center castle standing. Don't forget to read tooltips. They'll help you further learn the rules of the game. Good luck and orcs, orcs, orcs. So here we are. I'm going to pause right away. You can see this circle in the bottom left corner. When it makes the full round then it gives you plus one gold piece so this is our total gold pieces right now 11 out of 40 uh, yeah that's the limit uh, here you can see your whole deck cards you played and cards you still didn't play and down here you can see what you have in a drop pile and he here you can have your hand some cards exhaust and you can't see it anymore but you can remind yourself here what you have in the deck if that's important to you for any reason. Well, pause, the game still runs, but like at, I'm gonna say 1/20th of the speed or whatever. It's like so, so slow that it's basically paused for all. Um, so it would take like hours for the orc wave to arrive if, uh, if you keep it paused. So it's basically paused. I don't know why they did this. It's kind of weird, but 
for all intensive purposes it's still paused okay so here we can see the the uh, the the, um, <laughs> the 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 direction from which the orcs will come so they're gonna come from bottom right and we'll need to build some defenses so here's some of our cards we can build right now in the top left corner you can see the card cost uh here you can see the card name here you can see the graphic which describes the the placement rules so if i this road here i can place in any of these styles and the game will rotate it accordingly to fit if there's multiple ways to place it down like this one for example it's gonna let you rotate it you'll release it then you can rotate it at will and then when you're happy you confirm or just click somewhere else and it's gonna bring it back if you change your mind Right, so roads are very simple, they just increase the road length. Uh, so we got straight road and we got curved road. And then another curved road. Right, so this thing here is tier 2. So this card you can play as many times as you like. It's gonna still, it will go into your discard pile and get shuffled back in. This one's here, they have limited charges, they have two charges, and once you expand both, they get exhausted, you get them back at the next mission. Right, so you got the walls, these things you use to build castles. So this thing is like wall from the outside, and then some stuff in the inside, and if you like make walls all the way around, it's gonna be a castle. So for example, you can place two of these each to next to each other, you're gonna get a small castle out of it. Pretty cool. Right, and then you have the village, collect 1.5x delayed gold from completing a road. So delayed gold just means that you will not get the gold right away, but you will have to wait for the sticks to go through. But this is basically your income. So if you put this thing on a like, let's say a road of length, uh, four you're gonna get six gold back so it costs three you're gonna get six back so you want to have the road as long as possible in order for this card to be worth it if i just place it down here i'm gonna pay three for it and get three back that's all right as well but anyway we're gonna make like a little bit longer road here you're gonna go towards the the vault to get its secrets so as the game instructed us we need to be like next to each other redraw if you don't have any useful cards in your hand you can always push the redraw button to get a new set of cards but be careful if you use it enough times a new wave of enemies will spawn without the usual delay right so if you don't like your hand you can redraw a new hand with this button here you have three free uses after that the, it will start to take 20 seconds of the next orc wave so yeah uh, so right, next orc wave is coming from down there, so we're gonna start building some defenses here. We're gonna build a straight wall here like that. Hmm. Do we use the expensive version? So we have the version which costs 6 but has no charges, and we have the version which costs 3 but has charges. I guess for the start of the game it's better to use this one. We also thin out the deck once we get rid of it. New card! Castle Heart. So this is basically castle in all four directions you can only place it down next to already existing castle wall and then you have to finish all four sections uh, like uh, round it up with walls in order to complete the castle if castle is not completed it's not gonna have any towers it's not gonna like uh, shoot the enemies part of an unfinished castle to complete the castle lock it with castle sites right um let's build a small castle here there we go Congratulations, you have built your first castle. You can observe its stats such as HP, damage, and fire rate by clicking on it. So we're gonna click on the thing. So it has health, defense, damage, attack speed, segments, that is how much tiles it has, towers 2, and rune count one, uh, 0 out of 1. So runes are like spell enchantments you put on the thing, which then increases the the damage, fire rate, and so on. This is an example of one of them. This thing will increase the attack speed by 20 if you place it there. Okay, so let's wait. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, get some cash in. Farmland, 5 delayed gold, road end. Pretty simple card. Unlike village, you, you don't have to greed it out. It doesn't depend on the length of the road, so whenever you get this thing, just place it down, and basically you're gonna get five gold back after five ticks. Delayed gold. Notice after completing a road, you will get extra gold for a certain amount of time. We call it delayed gold since you don't get it all at once. So basically, delayed gold uh, prevents you from doing going inf infinite, right, with the gold. There's some combos in this game that will really, really increase your gold income. 
but since it's income and not uh, like uh, straight away you can just like do infinite deck and just auto win which i think it's pretty neat i think it's a really good way to do things okay we're gonna put the enchantment inside this thing here so you can see now our attack speed went up so it's gonna attack faster so when the orcs come it's gonna be pew 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 uh so right i'm gonna continue building the road well not really what we want okay i'm gonna place down another castle tile okay so usually like when you complete a castle that's it that's the castle you have you cannot expand it however if you manage somehow to place another tile with a castle without breaking the rules of the game that touches the current castle in the corner you'll be able to extend it so if i place it like this it will connect to this tower like that and then when i finish it here it will become one castle bigger castles are just way better than smaller ones because they scale way better because the rune you place inside will be um will actually apply to the whole thing right so i'm gonna place it down here so right now we have the start of a new castle there this one will work either way they're like oh what's that you're building something there hmm. right okay we're gonna extend the road a little bit more here and there now, if I feel like I really need more income, I can place this village down here. So this will give me like a lot of income. Magical vaults. You have found an ancient vault with hidden knowledge. You can complete its quest and receive certain rewards. There are different types of vaults scattered over the land. Some will be visible at the start of the mission, while others hidden in the fog of war. So this thing will give me... 11 which is weird i guess it's just rounding thing but basically we've paid three for this thing and we're gonna get 11 back we also get all the gold back for the roads that we placed so roads basically pay themselves back once you finish them and this thing's villages will actually give you a nice boost so we'll be getting like 11 gold over the next uh, 11 ticks so my, my income right now is three okay then we can place down the lord share it's very similar to the village. You just choose the road and place it and you get another one. Neat, eh? Keep in mind both the village and the Lord Chair are limited. So if you use it on too short of a road, you will run out of steam after some point. So if the enemies will be too strong, you will not be able to defeat them. Okay. There we go. This this quest here, Spell Vault. Play 3 out of 12 cards to complete the quest. Quest completed, 0 out of 2. So you can complete, complete this quest twice and the game will give you some cards to choose from. Okay, we got Castle Heart. Right, let's see. Can we place this thing down somewhere? No. Let's start another road. Uh, so let's see. There. 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 Militia Regiment. A group of warriors organized around a military flag. This road can be played. This card can be played to construct a building or summon unit on a free road segment. So you can only do it on a road which goes from the start to the end of the tile and doesn't have like any other building or unit there. So this thing. Oh, actually, you can place it here. That's interesting. Didn't think we will be able to. I guess this tile is empty and a crossroad, so it allows it. We're going to place it next to our town hall. Military units are summoned on top of the roads and are organized around a military camp represented by a flag. You can increase the size of military camp by summoning more warriors on top of the existing camp. Right. So these are my warriors now. They're going to... You cannot control them, but they're going to engage orcs when they come in their range. Protecting our town hall, which is pretty important. Right, we got another rune, rune of rock, rune plus 300 max HP. So this thing right now has 458 health. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I was targeting the tower. Okay, so this thing here, Ombra Val, Vale. So this is the city, which has 2.9k HP, a little bit more. And then its towers can be destroyed separately. I guess. How about this tower here? No, they all have the same HP, right? They can be destroyed separately, but the town itself will not collapse until they go through all of its HP. If we put this rune inside it... Oh, we can. There's no room. Really? Only one rune slot? Okay. Let's try to increase the rune slots of this thing so we can show off putting another rune in. 
Okay, we're gonna put this thing to touch the tower here again and try to close it off. Uh, that doesn't fit. We can put that here, I guess. Okay, we got a crossroad. I'll place it down here just to get it out of my hand. So this will be a net negative. This thing will give me two gold. I paid four for it, so it's not really gold gain, but uh, getting it out of my hand will be good enough for me. Okay, I need to wait a little bit. So I'm playing this pause most of the time. The quest is complete. Don't forget to click on the vault once again to claim your reward. Be aware that a vault may contain more than one quest, right? So I'm playing this pause. You can see this thing is not moving. And then I on pause, get some gold and I build. So like basically I played like a turn-based game and then let the time pass to get the gold back in. Okay. Uh, so we need to play 24 cards to complete this, the quest again, but we can get our reward now if we want to. So the game is offering us a tavern, a rune of rock, and a chapel. Right, this rune of rock you play it four times, it's pretty weak, and well, you don't get it back, unlike uh, unlike the runes we have here, have that grow. Upon exhausting its charges, this card will return to your deck, upgraded by one tier. So the starting runes are really, really powerful. And the ones that game offers us here are just like way weaker and kind of useless to be honest. Chapel, roadside, collect 3x delayed gold for each development tile in 1x1. One one. This is not true, it's actually in 3x3. Three three. It's basically all the tiles around it. So this actually gives you a lot of delayed gold. So this costs 4 to play and you can get up to... 24 gold, which is really good. Then we got the tavern, roadside, reduce the cost of the spells by one. Next one spell card is free on the dawn. So this one gives you way more gold, like when you play it. This one scales way better though. Like this one will give you so many discounts on the on the spell cards you play, it's quite good. Um and like you would be surprised how many things in this game are spells. Militia Regiment is a spell, Lord Share is a spell, Ru all the runes are spells, and you're gonna be playing runes a lot of times, uh, sometimes just to get them out of your hand, and sometimes, and they will also naturally upgrade, so between these two, I think I wanna pick Tavern, although this one gives you such a nice start, so this one's better to get going, but this one just keeps giving, also this one you can play twice, mm. let's go for Tavern. <laughs> Okay, let's complete, start completing our city here. We can put this one here and, okay, let's wait for some cash. You can see how my income went down. So this, uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call it? This village paid all the taxes and well, no more income. So now my income is one, but I use that money to develop further, to build some nice fortifications. I'm gonna finish this thing here, bam. So this is one big city now. And now we can unpause and uh, place another rune in so right now we have what we have one out of three runes here we have the rune of gust which increases the attack speed i'm gonna put the rune of embers which gonna increase its damage so right now its uh, damage is eight so if you put this thing in it's gonna do 11 right yep and then if i want to increase its hp from like 6750 to 7,000 we can place this thing in, but I'm not a huge fan of the Rune of Rock, to tell you the truth. It feels like a little bit underwhelming comparing to the other ones, so... It all depends on circumstances, I guess. But yeah, we have like a this big encampment going on here, okay. Okay, let's prepare another straight road, there we go, and another one there. So I'm gonna get some nice income out of this road. We're gonna make it even longer than the last one was. Okay, this thing we can play two more times. I would like to play it on a longer road if possible. So let's play some militia down. I mean, we have, <laughs> this is way, way more than enough than we need for this wave, so it's okay. Okay, uh, this thing, let's circle around. Okay, I'm gonna place a farmland down there to finish it from that side. The orcs are near! Notice, the orc indicator is located at the side of the screen, marking that the next wave of enemies will attack from this direction. Plan your development according to this information so you can protect your town center when the orcs come. Okay, I'm gonna place this thing down. Now, 
This game is not we are billions and they will not go around your fortification and try to kill you. They will go straight for your walls. They're kind of stupid. I mean, they are orcs after all. So yeah, we can also see where the next one will come from, from the upper left. But let's see how this fight goes. Uh, we might want to play some stuff though. Okay. Got a single wall there. Let's start a new town here that's gonna protect us from the new wave. Another single wall. Okay, let's place down a castle heart. There we go. How many slots this thing does give? I don't remember. Okay, I'm gonna place another road down. There they come. And you can see how uh, our city, which has quite a big range actually. Oh, did we put something in to increase the range? We didn't. Oh, Wind Zephyr, plus 3 global attack speed, plus 50% projectile accuracy. Oh, projectile accuracy minus 1.6. Right, so this is weather effect. You're gonna get a weather effect each mission, so. But let's see, let's see the carnage. I'm gonna put it on speed 1. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 towers here shooting our orcs, and this tutorial stands no chance against us. <laughs> we are missing a lot, though, because of the wind. And that's it, that's the first wave. Uh, and now we're gonna get ready for the second one here. Okay. Diagonal wall, yeah, sure. Single wall, sure. Let's unpause, get some cash going. Another single wall. Unpause. Okay, there's the tavern. So we're gonna place it down, like here. So now the spells are cheaper, you know, bring us more income. I think this is long enough of a road here. We don't have to greet it anymore. So we're gonna put the village down. So our income is gonna skyrocket. I'm gonna place down Lord Chair. So for the next 20 times, two and a half seconds, for the next 50 seconds, we're gonna get like, we're gonna be collecting this gold. Look at that, all that cash, mm, wonderful. Okay, put that there, put that there. Okay, let's put some runes inside so this small city here has up to four rune cards hmm. one two three four five six seven so i don't know why these have like multiple flags like this one here arrow tower defense five damage 11 and does that really matter i don't know some of these have multiple flags for some reason but in any case this thing two four six seven seven towers one two three four so this is about the same strength as the last one we built doesn't that look beautiful though? Look at that, my little village here. Protected from two sides if they only come from here, right? Oh. Okay, we are almost up to 50 gold, so we should spend the gold unless we want to lose it. So if once you get to your limit, you don't really gain anything from going further up, so... Let's build some stuff. Okay, I'm gonna put another rune in there. Let's see if we can extend this thing somehow. Uh, not really. Not the way we've built it. Okay. <laughs> so we cannot extend this. Because we messed it up with this road here and here. And uh, here the rocks are in the way. So we cannot place this thing the way we want. Yeah. Otherwise we would be able to extend it if we could rotate it into the rocks. But we can't. So. Sell away. Let's start another one here. Down here I guess. There we go. A blocked tile. This red indicator marks that the tile to feed this area is currently unavailable. That you can't build anything in the spot at the moment. Try to avoid this problem by planning ahead of your construction of roads and castle parts. So yeah, uh, don't like be crazy about building. So I don't have a single tile which is like uh, surrounded by four grass. So we cannot place anything here. But don't let that worry you. It's like of no consequence to what's going on here. So yeah. A place I uh, don't need income right now, so let's calm down a little bit. Okay, here come the orcs. Uh, this wave might be a little bit tougher than the last one, but uh, they might get a few hits in. Well, they didn't actually. Oh well. Oh, also, tavern makes uh, after the orc wave, the next spell on the next day is free, so we can play this for free. Doesn't really matter too much because they cost only two otherwise, but uh, after some time they become more expensive, so it might be useful. Right, let's check out our new card here. Choose one of the three new spells cards each time a quest completes. It was left one. Right, so we can grab Rune of Frost. Damaged enemies move and attack 30% slower. That's interesting. Uh, 
chapel. You know what? I'm huge into economy, so I'm gonna grab the chapel here. Although the rune of frost does sound interesting, not gonna lie. Let's place one of this thing down. Okay, we have a lot of redraws if we need them. Uh, this would be our last village. But also this is like the last wave, so whatever. Let's just redraw. Okay, there's the chapel. Oh, that's also a spell, so it's free. <laughs> so tavern makes us pay the chapel for free, so it's gonna be great. So this thing will give us 24 gold total. Amazing. Right, and then farmland, like I already said, you can place it anywhere you like. It's gonna give you five gold plus the gold for completed roads, so that's wonderful. And we're gonna continue building this road up. Now, I would like to finish this city up. There we go. Put another soldier like here. There we go. And uh, let's see, can we extend this thing? Oh, we can if you do it like that. That works. Another crossroads. Okay, another road for the new big road. There we go. This thing, okay. Okay, let's put some runes in there. Uh, let's play the Lord Share there. No reason to wait too much longer. Okay, so this will make this tile unusable because we have nothing to put in there. But like I already said, doesn't really matter. Okay. So this city is complete, we can put some more runes inside there and voila. Right, nice income, another chapel. Okay, we can place this thing here, give us even more from the chapel. Increase the road. There we go, I'm gonna finish it with a nice little village here. Oh, we messed it up. Congratulations, we played ourselves. Oh well. Alright. Uh, so let's see yeah this this part i really don't like so basically the the wall with a crossroad is so annoying it now stops me from placing this thing here to expand this thing if only there is some way to remove cards from your deck okay there must be right okay there we go put some runes in there and oh we can put runes on our people as well that's uh, that's useful i guess we're gonna do it like that and now the piece that got us in trouble can get us out of it as well but it will not like extend the city properly oh wait where is this thing coming from from the bottom left okay okay let's place some farmlands down and uh, let's start building a new road i guess for the village okay there we go this piece here but see like these roads are getting in the way so if they wanted to they could just like run inside here which you know even though i know they can do it still makes me a little bit uncomfortable let's place that down let's start a new city here like that good Place that thing down, wonderful, another farmland, there we go, and let's build this road up a little bit, okay, I uh, can just, probably just like, encounter them now to be honest, okay, let's do the village, good, so yeah, the first part, the first part I play a little bit slower, make sure my economy is nice, get my economy going, make sure I have enough cash to be able to afford all the castles and then well when I'm confident I just put it on speed 3 and just finish the mission but yeah that's the first mission basically the tutorial for this game uh, it gets much deeper and much more complicated so and I'm enjoying it so I'm gonna be playing some more but we have a couple more treats here before we finish this video though so this is a campaign so uh, after each mission you choose some things so here we have to choose two good things and two bad things you can check them out and uh, check them all out and then the like decide what you're gonna grab orcs cards the orcs have their own cards and their own deck they are power-ups and curses that will be automatically cast before a wave arrives during a mission making the orcs stronger plan ahead and pick your poison right so <laughs> So you can choose like uh, uh, what kind of like in uh, increasing effects the enemies will will have. Curse of greed. Curse plus five corruption. That sounds really bad. Okay, let's choose some cards. 
So we got Rune of Rock, Blacksmith Village. Ooh, Village is really good for income. Blacksmith increases damage by 20% of the surrounding buildings. Hmm. That's interesting. What else do we have? Scriber Guild, plus one hand cards. Ooh, I like the plus one hand cards effect. Uh, because like you have more options, you can hold more dead hands in, uh, cards in the hand before you have to redraw. Curved Road, cool. Castle Heart, which we already have, is not really that great. This one's better. That one I like a lot. It's very expensive, but once you place it down, you don't have to worry about it's clogging up your deck. We'll definitely grab the Scriber Guild there. And let's see here, we're gonna grab... I don't want the Rune of Rock, it's really bad. So... Not really sure why this card is not more balanced. It's like so little HP, it's really not worth it. The the other scale way better. Village for gold or blacksmith for roadside aura, aura which increases damage by 20%. You can do like a really nifty thing. If you're good at building castles, you can place a castle next to this blacksmith and just keep on expanding and expanding it and it's gonna scale like crazy. And now we already have a village so we're gonna grab the blacksmith here. And now we have to choose one of these two. Curse of Doom. Curse. Summons 45 orcs warrior. Plus 5 corruption. 20 HP, okay, so it's a spell. So if you want to get this thing out of your hand, you have to get 5 Corruption. So Corruption is like this mechanic that makes the enemies stronger, but also gives you more options. I feel like you should keep it low as long as you can. <laughs> uh. More orcs, but later. A hostile orcs card. Cards from the orcs deck are spread evenly to be played before a wave. Increases the power of orcs cards and the amount of action slots on the campaign map. Right, the corruption does. Spawn additional waves in the current mission. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna grab this more orcs. I don't want the curse. And now here we have to grab the curse. <laughs> curse of greed. It costs 10 to play it. It gives just 5 corruption, but... And 10 gold to get it out of your hand. It's really bad. Curse of Fate. Curse. Plus 1 per tier orcs card on mission end. Plus 5 corruption. I guess we're gonna grab this one and like try not to play it. So this one basically clogs up your deck. I wonder if you can like... A hostile effect. So do I get this card? I think I get this card into my hand, right? What other thing would it do? Yeah, let's grab that. Not really happy with the choices here. Select rewards, okay. Old battlefield. Your route brings you across a vast field filled with rusty weapons of another age and craters left by the adepts of void magic. Your royal advisor figures that some of the remains can be of use. Select a tile or a spell. So we can choose a faction tile card, we can choose a faction spell card, or we can skip. I really like tile cards so far, I'm way more impressed by their usefulness. So I'm leaning towards choosing a faction tile card. I think you can skip not to get any corruption, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more soon. I'm gonna choose faction. I think like digging through the battlefields will probably give me some corruption. So let's see about that. Faction tile card, please. So we get three to choose from. Okay, this one, I already talked about how much I don't like it. Although, I guess it's an okay income card if you can put farms next to this crossroads. So that's a three discount, but then it's still like a wall for four, which is like so awkward. Then we got the castle card, a heart plus 10 gold bank size, four open castle size. It's all right, but we already have one. And then Statue of the King. Okay, <laughs> this one has like the, the, the yellow text, so it must be legendary, right? Increases the health and damage of all warrior camps by 15% for each distinct castle. Huh. This is interesting. This is really interesting. So if you want, build the one big castle, so this is like, this goes like, 
opposite of what you want to achieve, right? So what you really want to achieve is like one big castle with all the runes inside it and real like huge damage bonuses. And this thing, you have to build a lot of small castles in order to buff your warrior camps. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So this gives you another way to play the game if you like. I mean, we also have like distinct castles. It's not always going to be possible to build one big one, right? Okay, it gives us a nice option, so we're gonna grab it here. And then we have to choose between select a card to chant with one of the available effects and uh, selecting an artifact. So this thing here, we select a card, uh, so depending on how much corruption raised, you get the stronger effect. The starting effect is to uh, make the card static, so when you reshuffle, it stays in your hand. And for some cards, this might be super powerful. But uh, right now I don't have a card I want to do this effect with. And once I click on it, I have to choose that. I can't choose that anymore. So we're going to go for the artifact here. Select a random artifact to add. Well, sooner or later we'll pick one of these up so you'll see what's up. But anyway, artifacts are, are like relics in Slay the Spire. They give you some good bonuses. World Corruption. Be wary of the world corruption. It grows as you play. It increases the amount of notes in mystery shops. It also gradually increases the rarity and tier of all cards and artifacts that you receive over the course of the campaign. But beware! That includes both your cards and orcs cards. The orcs will become increasingly more powerful on higher world corruption levels. It's a double-edged sword. Use it wisely. Right, double-edged sword. So yeah, if the corruption is high enough, you can get like a better effect here. And I guess you get more artifacts. Huh, interesting. Select a random artifact to add. So I guess you could add three if you want. Hmm, interesting. So this time we'll be able to choose one. Larger pockets. Increase the amount of cards in your hand by one. I like this effect a lot. Bucket of concrete. Building have 40% more HP. Ooh, that scales so good. But I feel like my instinct tells me I would rather have a really good economy and just have more buildings. But this sounds insane, 40% more HP. <laughs> and then plus 20% gold bank, I'm not really interested in right now. Unless at some point we get like a super expensive card that you have to have a lot of bank to buy, but um, are we really expecting that? I'm gonna increase the amount of cards in hand by one. I think that's really good. So I like that in deck builders to have a bigger hand. So here we are in the next mission, the Black Forest. Uh, so we're gonna do that in the next episode, which will probably be up uh, in like two or three days. So check back in if you enjoyed the first mission. Uh, it's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be interesting. I think I'm gonna be playing this a lot. It just scratches that itch, you know. It's kind of a cool strategical, tactical game and I like deck builders, so it's really, really nice. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, don't forget to like the video if you like what I'm doing and you're not subscribed yet, well, what are you waiting for? In the meantime, I wish you all to have a wonderful day, do something nice. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. The Numer signing out. Bye bye.